So today I thought let's buy some of these and see if they actually work. I mean while browsing for these I found some truly bizarre options. I mean look at this, a mask with a hidden camera? That's kind of a creative design I would say. I mean who would think a mask will have a built-in camera? Then there's this one, a fake Ferrari logo watch with a hidden camera on it. How about this one, a tiny camera disguised in a wall plug? I mean this is a bad idea because one of your family members will mistake this for a regular plug and they'll just shove some plug in there and blow up the house. And then there are these working chargers with hidden cameras in them. There are these bootleg spectacles with cameras. I mean I guess this is not that crazy. We have official products now from the likes of the Meta and Ray-Ban glasses. Someone made a hidden camera in a USB drive and then someone made a camera in this light holder. I've always had this paranoia on the back of my head like what if that light that's on there has a camera and I guess my nightmare is real now. Some of these hidden cameras are so hidden they don't even tell you where the camera is. Like can you see in this picture? You are buying this but you still don't know. I mean all of these are overpriced garbage so I'm not gonna buy all of them and I suggest you stay away as well but for the purpose of curiosity let's order maybe one or two of them. Here's one decent one I found and this seems like a practical product. It's a tiny magnetic camera less than two inches in diameter. This item cannot be shipped to your location. What? I thought Amazon had interplanetary delivery. Well, I'll just find another seller. There we go, that seems like a similar product. Add to cart. Next, I found something similar like this one. It's an even tinier camera. I mean, I don't think it's that small, but apparently it can do 1080p video with night vision. I guess those are night vision LEDs. But what's the point of this bright red color with rainbow stripes on it? It's like, hey, I'm a hidden camera. Don't look at me. <laughs> I suppose that's a good thing. It'll prevent people from misusing that. If it's a bright color, you can easily see it. But I wonder then what's the point of making it tiny? Ah, maybe I'm thinking too much. Let's just add to cart. Okay, the products have arrived. One of them is a pretty obvious package and the other one is this ominous black box without any logos on it. Let's start with this one. I have a curiosity towards unbranded boxes. Uh, it's the bigger camera that we ordered. And yeah, it does look bigger in person than it does in pictures. That's what she said. Yeah, it's super lightweight, man. It feels like there's nothing inside. There's a whole camera with a PCB and a micro SD slot as well. And of course, this uses micro USB to charge. And inside this smaller black box, oh, there's a small magnetic holder which you can stick somewhere. Yeah, the magnet is pretty decent, you know, it's not bad. And there are two kinds of micro USB cable, a stiff one and a regular soft one. Not sure what's the purpose of that, but whatever. Let's test the camera itself. It does have an app, that's interesting. The video quality looks decent out of it, but the frame rate is not good. It's super choppy, it looks like it's less than 25 frames a second. But I suppose because of this small size, you can install it anywhere, like on a tree somewhere, and keep an eye on your front gate. That's cool, I suppose. It does have night vision as well, which you can toggle using an app, but uh, these tiny LEDs aren't gonna do any magic. Unless someone is right up close to that camera, it's not gonna do anything. We already knew that given the tiny size. Anyway, let's check out the second product as well. This one was the smaller one with the pride flag on it. It comes in a pouch with a bunch of accessories and a giant printed sheet. I mean, you can tell that it's made by a smaller local brand and that's okay. Man, they didn't even apply this pride flag in a proper way. I can just peel it off like that. Well, whoever applied this shouldn't be proud of their work. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's look at the camera. It says 1080p 12 megapixels. Really? Press X for doubt on that. There's a micro SD card and what the hell? What kind of a port is that? That's a super old type of port. I remember that on like 10 year old devices. I made fun of the micro USB on the other camera. This one's even older than that. I don't even know the name of this port. What is it called? It's not micro USB. Oh bro. And that pin style video out port, like who uses these things? It doesn't have any app or anything, so you just use the button combinations to record. The problem is this camera sensor is not directly pointing towards you. It's like pointing down somewhere. And since there is no preview, you can't tell where it is pointing. So the videos end up looking really badly framed. But then again, this is meant to be like a security camera, right? You're not supposed to carry this with you. And it has audio, surprisingly, which is good. The other one has an app, so that's a different type of convenience. This one just records directly to an SD card, so that's another kind of convenience. Now obviously the video quality out of this is really bad, so I was thinking how can I use this? The videos aren't good, but then VideoProc said, hey bro, our tool can use AI to enhance these. So I thought testing this tool with some of the most horrible quality videos I've ever shot would be an interesting thing. And they have three main AI features. There's the AI super resolution, which as you think increases the video resolution from say 720p all the way to 4K. 
You can then use the AI frame interpolation to add extra frames like if it's only a 25 frame per second video, you can make it 30 or even 60. And then there's a stabilization option as well, so if you have a very shaky video, you can stabilize it. And the best part is, VideoProc actually uses your own device's hardware, so it uses like GPU acceleration to give you results. And you can see it working here, it actually does use your GPU. I've been using VideoProc some time ago as well, I've used their older version to convert video clips from one form to another, mainly because I record with my phone. And these clips are really low quality anyway, I mean even a good software can't really fix something that's broken completely by design. Ideally this software is meant for something like this, you know, a home video that you recorded maybe 10 years ago. It may have been in like 720p 30 frame per second which was a standard back in 2014 but now you can make it 4k 60 frame per second or even more and then like play it on your TV if you want. It's one of the more affordable tools I've seen and like I said I have been using the older version of it. And they even managed to get some use out of these garbage camera quality too. So shout out to VideoProc for sponsoring that segment. Go check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. And uh, if you want these tiny cameras, I guess you can message me on Instagram. I'll just send it to you if you want. You know, just for fun because I'm not gonna be using this. This was for my curiosity.